um, the importance of checking these announcements. Uh, in these announcements, there's a lot of information that could be valuable. Uh, right now, we just had an update to the tutoring sessions that are available. A lot of people miss these things I post in the announcements, so I just wanted to sort of draw attention to those. Um, there's tons of different times. In fact, they even added a couple times. So just want you to know that's there. Um, and again, each week I put out at least one announcement that kind of says everything to expect during the week. Um, and then also uh, we put out additional announcements uh, for special things like the, the tutoring schedule being changed or you know, being uh, updated, stuff like that. So don't miss those announcements. Uh, and then one other thing I wanted to, to show that people often miss is um, someone had asked me today if there's a study guide for the exam. Um, and the answer is yes, but people often miss it. So I'm going to show you where that's at. If you click on modules and you scroll to the week where there's an exam. So for example, we have this exam in week three. I'm just going to minimize that. Um, exam number one, right above it is the review for exam one. And for some reason, I think people's eye just skips over it as they're looking down. If you click on that review, it gives you these little instructions of how to review for the exam. And then number five, it says review the checklist. And so there's an exam checklist that actually has all, has, has all of the items that are on the exam um, in there together. If you download it, it's a PDF. And a lot of people miss this for some reason. But so you can see it's broken down by each exam and then by chapters. And I can tell you, having seen the exams, that each of these bullet points was made by somebody took the exam, read through it question by question, and then wrote this out. Uh, so it's really the best preparation or the, or the best starting place to prepare for the exam because uh, this checklist was in essence made by looking at the exam. So that's something people miss all the time. And I just wanted to sort of throw that out there to make sure people were aware it was there for them. Um, so that's kind of the, the general announcements. So anybody have any questions about general things about the course um, before we get into more content, uh, accounting content specific stuff? John, if, if you're talking, I can't hear you, you might be on mute. Can you hear me? Now I hear you. Now I hear you. Um, I was going through the uh, tutoring schedule and I uh -huh. didn't see Zoom code for ACE. You didn't see a, a code for ACE? Is that what you said? They had the three for the other tutors, but ACE wasn't on them. Okay. Let me take a look at it um, and see if I can figure out what's going on with that. So let's see. I think they have it now, Ace Christensen. So on this one where I put update, this is the newer one, it has Ace's uh, meeting ID there. I might have looked at the one from, from a couple of days ago. Yeah, this one I posted, what, two days ago, yes. Okay, it must have been the one before that, that's my right. problem. Oh, okay, no, no problem. I'm glad you asked because I, totally miss stuff like that all the time. That seems to be part of my MO. Um, it's a weird thing, right? If you do accounting, you should be good at like detail stuff, but I miss a lot of detail stuff. My wife lets me know occasionally. Um, other questions? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. So for, for those tutoring ones, do you have to make an appointment with them to show up at that time or would they just be there at that time? I think I tried to join yesterday it was a couple minutes late and there was no one there so then i figured oh maybe you have to make an appointment with uh with her 
So what what we were told again this gets this gets scheduled through the the accounting department. So I I've never talked with any of these tutors directly. So what we were told by the accounting department is that that you that you do not have to make an appointment. You can just show up. Um, you, you don't have to stay the whole time. If you can only pop in there for 20 minutes or something, then that's fine. So I'm not sure. Um, Professor Fox. Yeah. Day I went with um, one of the tutoring things. If you go down to Zoom and you put in the code, you'll pop into a group discussion and everyone can just go in. Okay. Yeah. So that doesn't explain why Sergio's when he went, nobody was there. So I, I don't know um, why, because our instructions were that they are just available for you to just pop into whenever, whenever you need to. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I sat there for a couple of minutes, figured maybe they just kind of wait to see if someone shows up. So I know you get an email when someone joins the room, if you're not there. Right. Uh, so I kind of waited a couple of minutes. Like I said, I was a little bit late, uh, but after a couple of minutes, I figured, oh, I better ask and make. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure. Um, so okay. So we can I'll, we could we could try to contact next time. Wait a little longer. Okay, say, someone's there. I'll say, and if you want me to, I can try to reach out or, or get an email address for that particular tutor and see what's going on. Um, do you remember which one it was? Yeah, I tried to do it yesterday. It was for Emily. Um, yeah, for Emily. That uh, I did it from five to six, if I'm not wrong. Okay, that's when I showed up. So. Where, where are you at, Sergio? Like, Utah. where are you? You're in Utah. Okay, so your time frame should even be the same as theirs. I mean, I'm in Arizona, right. and so we're mountain time, but we don't change with daylight savings. So sometimes people, <laughs> if you were from, if you're in Arizona, I was like, it's possible you got it mixed up. But um, all right, cool. So yeah, I'll reach out and see if, if, if we're misunderstanding those instructions, but I don't think we are. So I just don't know what happened um okay oh, that's other, all right thank you okay. so much for your help thank you uh, other other general questions before i move on to a little bit on the on the content okay hearing no other general questions also if i move on to content and then you come up with a question you can still ask don't be afraid to jump in there uh, or throw it in the chat if you want to um yeah I, I really will not get offended if somebody like like interrupts or whatever. Like that's I, I like we've been using Zoom long enough to know that it's just not it's not perfect. So just a couple of things. All right. So this this chapter just kind of gives us more on the types of accounts that we're going to deal with. Uh, again, we call it accounting, and people tend to think that means lots of different things, but really it just has to do with the fact that we are separating things into accounts, okay? Um, and so the accounts that, that are on the balance sheet, uh, sometimes those are called permanent accounts, okay? They're called permanent because they stay with the company from time period to time period. Uh, as opposed to temporary accounts, those are the accounts that are on an income statement, so revenues and expenses. Uh, we call them temporary because we reset them to zero at the beginning of uh, each period. Heidi, do you have a question? Um, yeah, I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, Fayez was supposed to have an interpreter join the room, and I'm not sure why she's not there, if she's been locked out somehow. Um, but would it be possible for you to turn on the auto transcript for him until she shows up? Sure, I didn't know I had an auto transcript. You do, it's down at the bottom of the screen. You should see a CC button. Yeah, I just got it. If you click on the, I believe it's the bottom one that says yeah, I auto. Just, I just did it, we'll see if it awesome. helps. Okay, but, thank uh, you, I appreciate yeah, his, it. His translator was here last week, so not sure. Yeah, I'm not what sure happened? what's going on, but we're working on getting her into the room. So thank you for turning on the auto transcript for now. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Bye. Okay, so uh, as I was saying, so on the balance sheet, we have these accounts, uh, assets, liabilities, and equities. And those accounts, they carry over from 
one time period to the next. So from one month or one year, however, we're, we're reckoning time periods. Um, and so you learned about those a little bit last week, uh, but this week they give us what's called a classified balance sheet, which has more detail. And what makes it more detailed is they separate out the assets into a few different types of assets. And those types are based on their liquidity. Uh, liquidity is a term that just means the relative ease of being able to convert something into uh, cash, okay? So the most liquid of all assets is cash because it's already cash. So you can see right here, we're looking at the balance sheet, the classified balance sheet, and you'll see that assets is broken down into current assets, long-term investments, property, plant, and equipment, and intangible assets. So those are the different subcategories of assets. In order for something to be classified as a current asset, uh, we want it to either be cash already or to be able to be converted to cash uh, of a known amount uh, within the next year. Uh, so something like stocks in a company might not be considered a current asset because even though we can convert them pretty quickly, uh, what we can't do is we can't do it for a known amount. We're subject to the market price of that stock uh, at any given day. But our cash, we know what that's worth. Uh, debt investments, uh, this is where we've loaned money to somebody else. Um, that's money that we know we'll be collecting. Well, and it's not positively sure, but we, we, we think we'll be collecting. Accounts receivable is where we've allowed our customers to purchase something and pay us at a later date. Again, that's something we expect to collect within the next year. Um, these notes receivable would have to be what we call short-term notes receivable, due in less than a year. Inventory, that's the stuff we sell to people. Uh, and so it's normal for us to expect that to, to happen in a year. Uh, supplies, prepaid insurance, again, so these are all of our current assets. And we can tell they're a current asset because they, uh, we can convert them into cash within the next year. That's our plan. Sometimes people get confused, like, how would I know what order to put these in? I will tell you that even though this isn't a great example of it, almost always cash is first, followed by accounts receivable. And then the other stuff is in no particular order, honestly. Uh, I, meaning I, I work with these in business for years and, and the only thing that, that's consistent is cash followed by accounts receivable. So I'm not sure why on our example from the book, they gave us debt investment second, but normally you'll see cash then accounts receivable. Um, Long-term investments are what they sound like. This is something we're putting an asset that we own that we don't expect to turn into cash in the next year. Okay, so in this case, uh, and, and they're, they're held for investment purposes, okay? As opposed to an operating purpose. So stock investments, investment in real estate, that would be, um, those are things that we put money into that we are holding for more than a year and that we're not using for our day-to-day -day operating of the business. As opposed to property, plant, and equipment, which are things that also that are gonna last more than a year, we're not gonna easily convert to cash, but that we are using for the operation of the business, land, equipment, um, buildings, things such as that. And then finally, intangible assets, which are, are assets that we own, but that aren't physical in nature, like land or, or equipment, things like patents and trademarks and copyrights, those are intangible assets. So, that's sort of a breakdown of most of the assets you'll see and the different classification or categories of assets you'll see on a classified balance sheet. Questions about any of those? Um, when you're doing the uh, cash and accounts receivable, does it matter? I know you said, but if, if for some reason we put it differently on there, would it mess, would it, that be okay? If we're doing a question on the current assets? Right, I, I, I don't know the answer. And the reason I say that is because sometimes things like Wiley Plus can be temperamental. Um, and so 
if it were in real life, I'll tell you, it would just look weird if cash wasn't first because it always is. Well, as far as will the is, system mark it wrong, I can't tell you the answer. I would just put cash first. Just put cash first. But if we had it like, you know, inventory up here or something, that would be okay. I believe so, yes. Okay. I don't mean to hedge on my answer, but I've used Wiley Plus and Pearson and McGraw-Hill and they all have their quirks. And so, but I've, I, I've used Wiley Plus long enough that I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure it allows you to put things around in different orders as long as you have all your current assets in the current asset section. Okay. Other questions about this, about assets? All right. So the next page of this balance sheet, they have the liabilities and they're broken into what are called current liabilities and long-term liabilities. Um, and it's just what it sounds like. Current liabilities are those debts that we owe that we're going to have to pay within the next year. So they're short-term debts um, as opposed to long-term liabilities, which are debts that we don't have to pay until more than a year from now. Uh, so you can see those all listed. Most debts, most liabilities have payable in their name, which makes it easy to identify them. The big exception on here is the unearned revenue. That confuses everybody because they think it's a revenue account, uh, but it's not, it's a liability. So what that means is, um, it means somebody paid you in advance and you owe them either their money back or the work they paid you for or the, the goods or services they paid you for. So um, any questions about the liabilities? Yes, uh, Brad Frost, I have a question here. Okay. Why the liability, the order is not before accounts payable, but the current uh, assets is uh, just the, uh, I, I, I mean, uh, is it, uh, is it okay when we do the assignment or the crease if the order, the not payable accounts pay payable and uh, also accounts receivable and not re receivable? Right, you know, so it's a good question because you'll notice on this classified balance sheet that there's there's notes payable in the current liabilities section and there's notes payable in the long-term liabilities section. So one of those notes payable must be due in less than a year and the other notes payable must be due in more than a year. And so in these cases, because we don't have enough information, we can't really tell which uh, of these liabilities are, um, you know, more or you know, are due sooner than others, and so it's okay to go ahead and put them in any order in there. But you're right that normally you'd see accounts payable listed before notes payable. That's that is a normal convention that you see almost all the time in the real world. Um, Professor Fox, on a, a more question on that, when they do that, will they like? maybe say this payment, this will be a note payable within a six month period, and this will be a note payable over like five years. Yes. They so would do if, a question in that format, Mike. Right, right. right. If, if you were expected to recognize that one of them was a current liability and one was a long-term liability, they would have to let you know the due date. Otherwise, how would you know that? Okay, I just wanted to clarify. Okay, Michelle, did I answer your question? Uh, you have my <laughs> exact question is the, it, it doesn't matter for the, assign, uh, for the exam, for the order accounts, the, uh, the notes and the account order, if I switch it, it's, it's that, okay? Yes, it's okay. Okay, because I know you say the notes payable sometimes belong to if the over one year, uh -huh. so should uh, uh, belong to the long term. Uh, liability, right? Over one year. Right, correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yes. Any other questions about liabilities or how they're put on the classified balance sheet? Okay, so then the last section on here is our stockholders equity. And you'll see our stockholders equity really just has common stock and retained earnings, just like it had on the normal balance sheet that we that we learned about last week. Remember that common stock 
is those funds, that capital or money that was invested by the owners or stockholders of the business and the retained earnings are any profits of the business or net income uh, that we don't pay out as part of a dividend. So it becomes uh, it, that. So, so our equity as owners, as stockholders comes from either money we've contributed to the business or money uh, that the business has earned and not paid out in some other way. So that's kind of really the new material for this week. There's a couple of ratios that have been added as well, um, but I'll let you, you know, you'll see those as you go through them. Um, anyway, any other questions about this stuff before we can move on to, I guess, if you have specific questions about homework, uh, some yes. of the homework items. Okay. I have one question. Okay. I see down here where it says total liabilities of stockholders is 61,400. Mm -hmm. so when we do that, are they just looking for long-term liabilities and the total stockholders equity, or do we have to put in total current liabilities? Yeah, so you'll see right here, they, they did a sub, they, so you had total current liabilities and total long-term liabilities, and you added those two together to get the total liabilities. And then it's your total liabilities plus your total stockholders equity that adds up to your total liabilities and stockholders equity. So it is both the current and long-term liabilities that create your total liabilities. Okay, so what they're doing is adding up all of this here for this right here, and then adding this here to put up here, adding those together. Correct. And so you'll see that will match up with, if I look with our total assets, right? We have assets of 61,400, and then our total liabilities and stockholders equity are 61,400. Okay. Uh, I mean, and, and if you think about the reason behind that, if a business has a certain amount of stuff, that's what assets is, is stuff, then either they owe the bank for that stuff or some other lender, so that would be its liabilities, or the owners of the business own that stuff outright, it belongs to them. And so what you owe the bank or some other lender plus what you actually own, that together has to add up to the total assets of the business. Okay, All that right, makes so, sense. I just want to make sure that I got that one right. Uh, other questions I can try to answer about this these concepts or um, items in the homework that people are struggling with or, or anything like that. Um, can I ask you a quick question? Um, sure. I'm having, so like I know some of the homework, you know that you have to fill in some of the blanks to mm -hmm. kind of figure out, you know, you have to know some of the numbers and stuff like that. I'm having a really hard time remembering uh, some of like the equations that you use to figure those numbers out. Um, you know, in the exams and everything is closed book, closed notes and this stuff. What do you recommend or what tips do you have that can help us remember those things that can help us remember how you get certain numbers, what equations you use and stuff like that. Because that's something that I personally really struggle with is I understand like a lot of the assets, liabilities and stuff. But mm -hmm. when it comes to actually figuring out the number, I'm lost because I'm all like, ah, oh, crap, I don't remember. How do you get that number? So do you have, what do you recommend? What, what have you heard? Or what do you know that helps? Students? Yeah, and so it's hard to recommend a specific thing because everybody learns in, in their own way, right? Like for me personally, is I, I break it down. And so for example, the fact like a balance sheet is assets uh, equal liabilities plus equity. So I break that down into a little algebraic expression, A equals L plus E, and that works for my brain. Um, and so then when they give me, you know, these little problems where it gives you the assets and the equity, I can solve for the liabilities. Uh, same with an income statement when it shows me that revenue minus expenses equals net income. Again, I just break that down. And because if you think about it, they're fairly simple expressions. Now, that being said, I think if I were to tell my wife, just make it into an algebraic expression, she would, she would give me a dirty look and say that didn't help her at all. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, it probably made it more complicated for her. Um, and so, um, you know, several students have told me there's, there's a tool in... Let me show you it in, um, let me go. So there's a tool when we go to the modules, 
and we go into Wally Plus Read, Study, and Practice. And then it's, it's this one right here called Orion, Personalized Practice. Um, I've had several students tell me that really helped them. I've sort of done a little analysis of it over several semesters and found that students who are using Orion tend to score something like, oh, about 10 percentage points. So like a whole full letter grade better on average. There's always exceptions on either side of that, right? But on average. And so that tool gives a lot of, um, uh, a lot of personalized practice it kind of goes through gives you sample problems uh, and then gives you feedback and then gives you more more practice on the things you struggle with um, there's also in here some where are they at some flashcards to help you learn some of these things as well uh, in in the orion material so I think, you know, it's one of those things where you kind of have to adjust according to your learning style. Are you just, does it work best for you just to memorize it or do you have to come up with a mnemonic or an algebraic expression or whatever works for you? I know that was a lot of talking to not give you a direct answer, Sergio, and I apologize, no. but uh, there, there's a few ideas that, that have worked for many of my students. Well, that's great. Um, well, it actually helps a lot. I remember you, you kind of talked about it and uh... I think it was one of your announcements where you gave the resources and stuff. So now that helps. This, this is just the second. This is the second time I've taken this class, and my first one was it was it was awful. I completely yeah. hated it, and I still think accounting was made by the devil to torture us today. But <laughs> um, but you've actually been a lot more helpful and given us more resources that can help us understand it. So just thank you. All right. Um. Um. I had a I had a quick question. Um, I prefer to use a get a piece of paper too when I take the exams to write down stuff and work out formulas for myself. Uh -huh. Is that acceptable? It is. And so if you if you check out in the announcements, I actually because I've been getting this question a lot. Uh, I just recently posted a an announcement that was like, "What can I use on the exam?" Oh, um, okay. and um, people it's easy. People miss the announcements because they scroll off. Okay. So sometimes, yeah, I, I didn't see it right now. That that's my, that's my fault. But yeah, so so for a while, the accounting department was was wanting us to not have pen and paper because they said there was a white pad app on there or like a, but it just wasn't working well. So um, what they recommend is you just show your blank paper to to your camera, and you know, I guess that's telling Proctorio when they when the reviewers look at it. Like, hey, I'm not cheating. I, this is my my blank paper. You know, even though you know there's somebody out there who could, you know, have a yeah, have I, notes down. But but you know what I'm saying. Um, yeah, I, I took accounting last semester too, and accounting drains my soul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I'm sorry. I I, I, think, I appreciate the fact that you have office hours and you actually do tutoring <laughs> sessions. My last semester, my professor didn't. <laughs> well. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. And I, and I do want to throw out there as you get ready for the first test in week three, that like people are really freaked out by Proctorio. Um, and you don't have to be, be so all it does, like, like the worst case scenario, if you look away from the camera too much, or if you're looking down at what looks like notes too much, is it flags you. And then it sends an email to me saying there's a potential academic integrity infraction. And then I, I review the the uh, the video, and so if you're not cheating, then you don't have anything to worry about. I know a lot of people are like it's going to think I'm cheating. I just want you to know that when it flags you, there's still human interaction because even after it flags you, it goes to one of their reviewers, and then their reviewer usually says, "Oh no, that student was just whatever," you know, looking down at their calculator. And then even if they're not sure, they send it to me, and we can work it out. So don't let the whole proctorio thing freak you out too much. It's, can you have a bottle of water with you? Because my professor last semester said you couldn't. You can have a bottle of water, yes. Okay, thank you. I just wanted, I only ask these questions because I, you know, I want to make sure I'm not doing anything questionable, okay? Right. What you really can't do, okay? What you really, what really looks bad and what I actually caught people cheating with is like if you have two screens on your computer and you're pulling up other stuff on the other screen, okay, Proctorio knows that. Uh, so you can't, pull stuff up on other screens. You can't get up and leave the room because it's going to be like, whoa, what is this guy doing? Why is he leaving the room? Um, 
so I mean, those are the big things. And the things that will flag is if it sees you looking away from the, the monitor too long, it looks like you're looking at notes or something. But drinking a drink of water, um, you know, if, you're, if your kid runs through the room, I see some of you have children. Um, again, it might flag you because you're trying to like get the kid out of there or whatever, but any normal person would look at that and be like, they're just trying to get their kid out of the room. I just want to sort of take away all of the, the fear factor of Proctorio. It, it, so pretty much as long as you're looking at the camera and your you show the paper and the pencil and your calculator using and all that, you're good. You're good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about Excel sheets? What's your, just like a blank piece of paper? It's a clean, nothing Excel yeah, sheet? Correct. Yeah, because anything else would be using notes, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> People are like, what if I have all my formulas in Excel? And I'm like, yeah, that would be awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I found you for that. <laughs> but no, you could so you can use Excel, but you have to start with a blank a blank sheet. Yeah, okay. I like. Let me just put it out there. I recognize how bad it stinks that you're not allowed to use notes or or anything. Um, um, but that's that's the departmental policy. So that's the policy we follow. Okay. I know I know it stinks, and I'm sorry. Yeah, so I have a question. I just want to clarify. Um, so you were saying, you know, in the account, um, you know, the big picture, the account means that there's, uh, you know, certain things listed in the account, and then you open the account. Is that what that means? Or is that you, you open the assets within the account? Uh, I don't know if you can clarify assets for me. Sure. So, so an asset account is just where we record the cost of acquiring an asset. So, um, so if, if we have a, an asset account called equipment, then the debit, the balance of that account will be the amount that equipment costs us to acquire. Our cash account is just going to show the amount of cash we actually have in in uh, in our possession. And so as far as to open account would just mean like if we didn't have an asset and then we acquired it, we would then um, you know write down that asset in our in our our books or in our, our record. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, I still don't understand. Um... So asset, does that also kind of mean like opening like cash, uh, like putting cash into the account and then recording that and then spending it on equipment and things like that? So is that the beginning of opening the account? Yeah. So when we start a new business and the owners take some of their private money and put it into the, the, the business, you know, then that would open the cash account. And then if we were to purchase some equipment with some of that cash, we would, we would record our cash going down and the equipment, we would open an equipment account and show that value or that balance going up. Does that help? Mm, kind of, I think I need to get some clarification still. Um, give me one moment. Let me have the interpreter expand a little. Um, I had a question about some of the financial ratio um, classification. Um, uh, just a second. Um, yeah. The uh, characteristics of useful information and the uh, monetary unit assumptions. With those, are we just going to need to know like the basic definitions? Yes. Okay. They you won't go, go into deeper. like, here's a plant over here that's $10,000 or something. It will just be, here's a definition for that, that yes. you know, like for like monetary, just knowing that accounting records only those things that can be expressed in terms of mo of money or dollar correct yeah those are definitional terms okay we don't need to go deeper 
just wanted to make sure. Will we need to know about the uh, principles where it goes with the measures, the historical cost principle, revenue, um, expense ratio on full disclosure? Um, I'd have to look specifically at the, are you talking about for the exam? Yeah, I took it from the um, self-study. Mm -hmm. And at the very end, they had the principles of measure the historical cost principle, revenue recognize, recognize performance, expense, expense recognize, and full disclosure. Yeah, so I'd have to look at the little study guide that I, I mentioned at the beginning to know off the, off the top of my head, I don't remember those things being heavily um, you know, present in the exam, but I'd have to double check in the, in the study guide. So it's, it's probably going to be more the monetary ones and the, uh, and the uh, characteristics of useful information. And, and more like just knowing the different accounts, right? Being able to say, these are the asset accounts, these are the liability accounts, these are the equity accounts, and then being so they, able to say how do changes in one of them affect the others. So with an asset, a liability, they'll just, um, you know, cash is an asset or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or a plant prop. If you buy a new, if you build a building for a hundred thousand dollars and take off, that will be considered a liability. Those kinds of questions. Yes, like I said, I would go through that checklist. It's going to give you very detailed what to expect. Okay. I have another question. Okay. Okay, so you open in the opening, you know, it was kind of a struggle to, to uh, you know, catch up to everything. So I'm just trying to catch up. My apologies. But there's a practice test then um, that uh, we are able to look at before the real test. So there's not, there's not, there's a checklist that shows all of the things to expect that are on the exam. And so it's broken down by each exam, and then there's bullet points to show you the different items to expect on the exam. So that's not a practice test, but it's, it's a really good tool because whoever created it was looking at the exam when they created it. In other words, it's made from the exam. Now, in the additional study content I mentioned last week, and I guess I'll, I'll show it again this week. So in my weekly announcements, down in the additional study content link. There are some self-tests for each chapter, and those self-tests are created by the textbook publisher, Wiley. Uh, and they, they look and feel a lot like the questions you'll have on the exam. So they're something worth, worth practicing with as well. Uh, and there's even like, uh, for some of them, a little video of let's see or maybe there's not any video on these um anyway but here's some like anyway so those self-tests people find useful because they look and feel like the type of questions you'll have on the exam just as a warning the exam questions will not look and feel much like the homework questions they're multiple choice or or fill in like a single blank as opposed to a you know, a homework uh, assignment that is that is kind of having you work out the accounting. Oh, uh, with the self tests, are those ability to take those over? Uh huh. Yeah, they don't they don't impact your grade at all. They're just practice. Do they keep can... them as the same questions, or they do auto uh, recalculate for different ones? I believe they're a, a, a static set of questions. Okay. And you said that was under week two announcements, right? Yeah, it's under the announcements every week. Or you can find it in, if you go to, if you go to, it's in the announcements each week. But it's also if you go to modules and scroll all the way down to the bottom, where there are. Is that for the Wiley or the exam? Like, which one is the practice test that you're talking about? I'm not sure I understand that question. Oh, I'm in the wrong course here. That's why. 
Well, you were saying there was, you were taking the, he was asking about the retake, uh, the retake for the exams. And so I'm wondering um, which one is that? You said it doesn't affect your grade. Which one is that? Where do you okay. find it? So that's just the practice. That's, that's the practice. So these self-tests that are in the additional study content, that doesn't affect your grade. You can take that over and over just for practice. The exam itself does affect your grade and you cannot retake it. Okay. Sorry, so you, if you go to the modules. So I'm sorry, where do I find that list? I, I, I didn't see how you pulled it up. Okay, so we're gonna come into modules. Then we will scroll all the way to the bottom where it says student resources. And the very first link here, additional study content is where I've posted that. It's also a link to it in the weekly announcements. Okay, so student are we other questions or any uh, homework problems that you're struggling with specifically that I can? Uh, yeah, I do have another question. I'm sorry, I, I am struggling, of course. Um, uh, and plus, I'm a little bit behind in filling out uh, some of the, the things that were required. But um, the question I had, uh, what was it? Oh, right. So when you, um, you know, when you're taking the exam, you were talking about looking away from the monitor and all of that. I have, um, oh, in Proctorio, um, you know, I'm kind of curious then, um, like, you know, after 30 minutes, like, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of distractions for me. So I'm kind of curious, like after 30 minutes, will it just shut down? Or like, am I, is there something I should be concerned about? Or do I just need to focus on the work only? Or, uh, you know, I just want to let you know that it, just to be aware that I have, you know, a lot of distractions and, and a hard time focusing. Sure, no. So Proctorio will not automatically shut you down. Um, you know, the tests are timed. Uh, some individuals have, uh, negotiated, um, you know, a, a time different than the standard time through uh, through disability services. Each each individual that's negotiated that their test has been set to that time amount, um, and so you know, Proctorio won't shut you down. The worst thing that will happen, like I said, is it will if you if you look away from the camera too long or something, it will it will flag that and send me an email letting me know, oh, the student looked away and then I can review it. It's really the intent is just to ensure no one's cheating. Okay, great. <laughs> That's great, thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry, Brother Fox, I missed that. Mm -hmm. Can you share again about the looking away? Because I'm going to be looking at my calendar or my calculator. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm wondering how long do I have? Like, like to have 30 seconds to look at my calculator or should I just do a widescreen so that you can see I'm looking at my cal calculator? I missed that part. I apologize. So, so what's funny about this is, is my intent was to demystify Proctorio, not make people not, not make people more nervous about it. Uh, what I'm telling you is the worst thing that the Proctorio system will do is is flag you and say this person looked away. I don't know the amount of time before it does that. I will tell you that the vast majority of exams, I get an email from Proctorio that says there were no concerns. So, and I'm guessing any sort of activity within the normal range of looking at your calculator, doing that doesn't get flagged because I've had hundreds of students over the last several semesters and I very rarely get a flag. So I, I was just trying to say, don't worry about it. Just do what you're doing. Use your calculator, use your scratch paper. Um, if it does flag you, the worst thing that'll happen is I'll review it. And I mean, I, well, I mean, if you're actually cheating, the worst thing would happen is 
we'd have to talk to you about academic integrity, right? But if you're not cheating, then don't worry about it. It's I was trying to tell people, don't be nervous, don't worry. So sorry Perfect. if I if I had the opposite effect. No, I, I just wanted to clarify because you know this accounting thing is you probably laugh, but it's a bear for some of us. <laughs> no, I, I I understand. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, we're we're getting close to an hour. I don't want to, we don't have to stop at an hour, but that's our normally what we do. So any any other questions or or uh, I don't know, do you just want to complain or tell me you hate my face because of accounting, whatever you want to do for the next <laughs> few minutes. Any other questions, I guess? Yeah, I'd like um, I just want to make sure you know, uh, to have some one-on-one -on -one time with you to just clarify some things, if that's all right. I just feel really overwhelmed with the things that are going on, the processing time and all of that. So can we get some one-on-one -on -one time? Sure. Do you mean immediately following this meeting or do you want to schedule a different time? Um, I was wondering if we could do after this meeting. Sure. Thank you. Okay, well, if there's no other questions, uh, anybody out there uh, willing to offer a, oh wait, something popping up in the chat here. Let me make sure I. So yeah, no problem. Actually, I, I posted in the class, but I can send you a link as well. Um, okay. Um, don't have access to the class. Sorry, right. I was just asking. <laughs> um, all right, so why don't we have a, a closing prayer? Um, uh, any any volunteers for a closing prayer? I will. Okay, great. All right, our Heavenly Father, uh, you know, we really appreciate everything that you do and getting us to this class today. We hope that you, um, you know, bless our interpreter and uh, help us all understand this content uh, and resolve any test anxieties or questions and lead us through to the proper answer. And thank you for the instructor for helping me and guiding me through building my knowledge and my strength and um, increasing my skills and uh, being able to, you know, stay safe at home and in Jesus' name in Christ, amen. Amen. All right, thanks everybody. Have a great night. I'm gonna end this recording.